Everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the tomatoes because they're they're just taking off, man. They're huge. Like today's June 11th, and uh, my this tomato plant in the back here is over five feet tall. It's already actually has fruit on it down here at the bottom. Some cherry tomatoes that have been forming. That's a, a variety called black cherry. For those of you guys who are interested, but. I wanted to talk about how we got to this point here, guys. I wanted to talk about what I'm doing right now and what I can kind of expect in the future because we've got pretty big harvests coming in really soon. I mean, every one of these plants has flowered to some degree. You know, they're putting on lots of fruit now. So it's not going to be too much longer before we have, uh, you know, lots of harvest. We are not going to know what to do with all these, to be honest with you. I'm going to give quite a bit of these away. Um, I'm also going to make a lot of these for sauce. We have specific tomatoes here specifically for paste, but also, um, you know, this is a huge collection of different varieties. This is like 18 different varieties of heirloom tomatoes, most of which have been recommended to me in Amy Goldman's book, uh, The Heirloom Tomato, I believe it's called. And let's talk about now kind of how we got to this point right here. It all really started indoors. So sometime around um, February 1st is when we started them um, in three inch by three inch pots, cow pots. And you can go back and watch all these videos, by the way. This is all part of the 250 days of gardening series because why is it 250 days? Is that I'm including the indoor portion of our growing season. And this all started way back then. So if you're thinking about getting these tomato plants and you want them now, it's gonna be very difficult to do this. So it all started way back then when a lot of you guys had told me that you're just starting your tomato plants too soon, Ross. They're gonna not transplant well. They're gonna get too lanky. Um, even people were quoting, you know, educational studies um, from universities. And I was just was telling them that, yeah, I agree with you guys. There's a lot of different things that people can do though. You know, every grower's different, every grower's condition's different. You know, I'm not growing them in, the, in a field here, guys. I'm growing them in a really small space. I can really take care of them and um, I can really select the right microclimate. So not only do we get them a head start, but they're in just like the perfect spot. We're gonna get to that in a moment. But, um, so we started them actually, like I said, February 1st, and then shortly after that, I would say about a month or so in those three inch by three inch pots, they got root bound. And then we up potted those into a half gallon size pot. We did a video on that. And then they sat indoors for a whole three months, close to three months. And then May 1st, we transplanted these out. And now today is June 11th. So it's been about a month, a month and a week or a month and 10 days since we transplanted them. And like I said, they just taken off and it really had a lot to do with the head start, the size that we had gotten them to. They just had a huge size, a huge root system before we had put these in the ground. And I want to show you guys how we planted them. We also did a video on planting them. I mean, I don't know how you guys aren't hooked. You're not convinced at this point. We planted them here sideways. We put the root ball on its side. We didn't dig a really deep hole. We put them on their side, buried some of the stem, and then put the stem on an angle up towards the, the pole there. And it's done the same way across the board here. Planted this thing sideways, put the stem, um, dragged it all the way up to the pole. And now we've got ourselves just really strong, healthy tomato plants. Just because they, the whole reason for that is that when putting them on their side and not burying the root ball very deep, you've got yourself essentially more heat that way because the deeper we go down in the earth, the cooler the soil is. On the surface, especially in the spring, it's a lot warmer. So we wanna make sure that we're getting the soil really warm. We don't wanna cover it with mulch. We wanna make sure it's in a nice microclimate. And then also because we are having the, the stems buried as well, they're gonna form roots along the stems and they're gonna form really big root systems to what already was big transplants, big root systems. They didn't look the greatest, the leaves, the top of the plants, but the bottom spoke for itself. So essentially, we put in these huge tomato plants, fast forward to today, and, and this is what they look like. Um, again, the microclimate here is basically perfect. We have them on a south facing slope. We have good drainage here. We've got sun all day. We've got them in 
just a high heat environment. High soil temperatures is what you guys want to get these things off in the ground sooner and off to a better start. So that's sort of it. And here's what I'm doing now to get these guys ready to be harvest, uh, to be harvested. So essentially we're just coming in here and making sure we're getting rid of these suckers. And what is a sucker exactly? Well, you can see the main stem here that we've tied to the, the pole and it goes all the way up like this. And then you can see the flower clusters continue. And then here's the main stem. We need to tie this main stem to the pole, make sure this thing's not getting unruly. But we also need to get rid of these suckers. And this is a very common thing that people do in greenhouse production systems where they grow them as single stem plants. A lot of times they'll wrap a string around them, keep them all nice and tidy that way. But this in particular here, this sucker is gonna take away energy and make this whole system really just not work. Uh, this will eventually fruit for us, but it's gonna create a huge mess. We wanna have good airflow through here. I've placed them a foot apart from each other so each of these poles is representing one square foot of growing space, of vertical space. And essentially, that's what we wanna keep them to. We don't wanna let them get out of control. We don't wanna let them bush out because that's what a tomato plant will naturally wanna do. So we're gonna come in here and actually take off this sucker. You can, again, follow that. It's right above the leaf here, which then attaches to the main stem. And then in between the main stem and the leaf is the sucker. We just break this off very easily with our hands. We could also come in here with scissors or pruning shears. We'll put that on the ground. Hopefully that energy that was put into creating that can then be put back into the soil that these plants can then draw from. Um, and that's all I'm, do I'm doing right now, is just maintaining these. Um, like I said, this black cherry, I think I may have said this to you guys, this black cherry tomato plant is huge. It's doing really well. It's got flowers all up and down it and it's already got fruit forming down in here. So we're not really that far away from our first tomatoes, uh, particularly of that, that variety. But almost all of these across the board has flowers on them. I'm gonna show you guys a couple more varieties here. Something I've, been, I've found just to be really interesting. Look at this guy back in here. Isn't that something? So this is a variety in here called Blonde Kopschkin, which is a red little tomato. I think it may be uh, a cherry tomato, but it could also be a currant. And this is the, the tag down in here. Hopefully you guys can read that, there you go. And this is one of the varieties, again, that Amy Goldman had recommended in her books. I got these varieties mostly from Seed Savers, also from Baker Creek and they've done just exceptionally well. And look at that nice little, I mean, this is a, it's a crazy cluster of fruits right there. That's just really impressive. Um, also, I did, we did do, by the way, for those of you guys who are telling me that my tomato transplants were just too big, too lanky, I started them too early. We did have some tomato plants that uh, we didn't start right away. Some of the seeds didn't make it right off the bat, um, this particular variety we got from a friend a bit late. And this one was started about a month, month and a half, maybe even two months, of, I'm not exactly 100% sure, but this variety right here was started much later than these other varieties that are much taller, much more vigorous, just transplanted way better. And you can see right in here, this guy just doesn't compare. So getting them a little tomato plant in the ground compared to these larger tomato plants with the larger root system. Um, it's just night and day difference. So I wanted to show you guys that, that difference there for some of you guys who were sort of doubting the process. You know, there's just a million ways to do the same thing here, guys. You know, not everyone has to do everything by the books, by what the universities are saying. You know, we're not farmers, we're backyard growers. We're growing them in a really small space here. And the nice part about this is that I'm gonna have tomatoes starting very soon till like pretty much till frost. And that's really difficult to say for a lot of people because we get a lot of disease at a certain point in the year. People just struggle with their tomato plants. And we're gonna do a nice comparison because I have some tomato plants here that I've growing as single stem plants. And then I have some others on the other side of the house that I have about nine or 10 plants over there. Those are gonna be bushed out and we're just gonna let them go wild. And you're gonna compare the differences, especially in terms of timing 
of when these finish compared to the tomatoes over there and, and when those actually finish. So for me, you know, again, it's gonna be night and day in the production and just the amount of space here. Um, I'm gonna have very little disease to deal with because we're not only are we, you know, taking out the suckers and tying off the main stem, but we're coming in here down low and we're taking off any of this growth that doesn't look too good. Any of this stuff that looks a bit diseased because when the water hits those leaves and then splashes up on the other leaves, that's how you spread the disease. That's how when the water hits the soil and bounces up on the leaves, it keeps spreading. So we want to make sure that we're getting rid of a lot of these lower leaves. And you can see here, this is a you know beginning of that. So we can take this off and that's going to help increase that airflow down here on the bottom. And that's how I'm going to essentially get what is production almost all year, even till frost. Whereas most people, what they have to do here in this area is that they have to succession plant. So we'll have our tomatoes now, we plant new seedlings later, and then we keep doing that so that we always have tomatoes even late in the season. But these just don't stop. And I have a video last fall to prove that here in the Philadelphia area is that you don't need tons of space. You don't need tons of tomato plants to have just super, super production. So we'll come at you guys when we harvest these. We'll come at you guys um, with some taste tests. We talk about the varieties and the differences and the heirlooms and which I think really are stars out of her book. We'll definitely get a good idea out of uh, from that for sure. And uh, yeah, I wanna catch you guys for tomorrow's video. Hope to see you there and uh, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You know, for con different content, definitely than the videos. Also check out the blog, right? rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. We offer consulting services for those of you guys who wanna grow figs. And uh, I think that motorcycle is our cue that we're gonna end the video. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys for tomorrow's video. Peace out.